you want to structure your business so that you can do the least amount of work with the most efficiency to yield the highest results possible. All right. Thank you all for being here. My name is Teresa Sigman. Today's topic is who is your ideal client? If I narrow it down to just the tiniest little bits that we can cover in about 45 minutes, who your ideal client is, is twofold. And you just make two columns. One column is what are your hopes and expectations for your client interactions? And then on the other side, it's who is your client? Now, if you're a brand new business person who's really only made just a few things, or even if you only want to make one garment a month or do one set of alterations a month, that's fine. Also, it's a little bit of pocket money, right? And it keeps you sewing, which you love. Then really the only thing you have to worry at this point in time is what are your expectations? What do you hope? Now expectations, if we hold on to those expectations really tightly, we can negate all of our good work because we have held too tightly to them. But it is still a good idea to set forth some parameters on what you want to experience. All right, so we've got that they're flexible because they might not get the fabric so they're, and, the, and or the design might change along the way, which is fine. So long as you're both in agreement on both of those, we want them to be kind. The other thing that we want from our ideal client is that we want to feel valued. We want to feel respected and we want to feel appreciated and paid well for our skills and knowledge. So that is one of our end goals. And oftentimes all that requires is educating the client so that they're like, oh, well, I had no idea it took this long or, oh, I had no idea the materials cost this much. Or, oh, I never thought about the fact that, oh, you're tracking the 20 minutes that we had on a phone conversation and that you're tracking the first hour when I couldn't make up my mind on the design. Oh, I see now why my dress is so expensive. And if your client is those two things, most other problems you can resolve with good communication skills. Okay, I'll give you a perfect example. One of my sewing school members who's also in the Dressmaker Business Academy, she is in New Zealand. And she says that one of her clients that she has worked for for a very long time, they used to be good friends. And over the years, that has shifted as friendships do. And she says this woman has gotten increasingly angry during all their interactions, whether it's on the phone or in person. Do not take that. Fire them. Because that is not an ideal client, period. And when you knowingly accept people who do not respect you, they probably don't respect themselves either, but you can't do anything about that. You can only affect what happens to you. So if the person, if you talk to them on the phone the first time and they're just, you know, kind of a little grumpy, okay, one time is fine. They could be dehydrated. They could be hungry. They could have just had their child spill ketchup all over the kitchen. Anything could have happened, right? So give them one shot, maybe two. And if after the third conversation with them, then if you have not started the dress, fire them. Because if they do not respect you, if they are not kind to you, it will only go downhill as you make the dress. And then they will end up hating that dress and you will end up hating the dress and the person. And that is not a win-win situation for anybody. Which then brings us to who is this person who will yield the results that you want with the least amount of time and the most efficiency. That who is someone who is dedicated or is willing to spend time and money to invest time and money into whatever it is you are sewing for them. Whether it's a wedding dress, whether it's a dance dress, whatever. So if I give you two examples of weddings, 
and you tell me which one is your ideal client. If you are making a wedding dress for a woman who has, who is inviting six people and they're getting married in their backyard, how much is that person going to spend on a wedding gown versus the person who spends $30,000 on a wedding they rented out a very nice vineyard and they're having 200 people come for the wedding. Who's going to get a better dress? Who's going to spend more money on that dress? The one who is investing in the big time wedding. This will always be the case, folks, always. So if you have a choice, between two clients who meet your personality requirements and you only have time for one dress, which one are you going to take? You sure as hell better take the person that's having the $30,000 wedding in the big vineyard because that will be a beautiful gown. You get to be creative with it. Your profit margin will be higher and your client will complain less about paying $6,000 for a wedding dress because they're already spending $30,000 on the event versus the woman who's getting married in her backyard and her neighbor made the cake and her local pastor is coming out for free. She only wants a $300 dress because that is what's relative to how invested she is in it. Now that's not, not to say getting married in your backyard is wrong. I'm just saying from a sewing business, you don't really want that client if you have a ch choice. And again, we'll talk about that more in the live challenge. And if you want to do a deep dive on it, there's always the Dressmaker Business Academy. So in a sense, there's three types of clients, right? There's one who are already ideal because they're willing to invest the money because they already spend a lot of money on whatever the item that you sew is anyway. So it's no big deal to spend more because they understand the investment, both time and money. And they're nice people. That's like the best right there. <laughs> And then there are the people that you can convert. You can make them ideal clients simply by educating them on what you do, how long it takes, and how valuable you are and how valuable what you do is. And then there's the people who you can never change. They will always be grumpy. They will always be difficult to work with. Fire their butts. <laughs> I am not kidding. Do not do that to yourself anymore. I know you've done it at least once, maybe a hundred times. There are few people who sew in this world these days, and there are even fewer who are good at it. So why would you undercut yourself and compete with people who only want to pay $50 as if it came from a catalog, or why would you want to torment yourself taking clients who are mean? Just don't. You do yourself a great disservice. So I want more people in this challenge. So if any of you are on here who have not signed up for this sewing challenge, please do so. There is a link. I'll actually put it in the chat right now. But there is a link also in the email, in the Facebook posts. There's links everywhere. So if you have not registered, it's a freaking free challenge. <laughs> How can you go wrong? You're investing a few hours of your time to learn life changing things. I like to feel like I have people here, like I have people that like to hear my message because we all do. And when you have somebody who's been through what you've been through, but they've come out of it, it seems like it's good sense to listen to them, right? <laughs> okay, awesome. So I will let you go. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your comments. And I will see you inside the challenge. And please feel free to post the link for the challenge in all your favorite social media. Forward the emails to your friends. Let's get more people in here so that we all help ourselves more and that we get support from other 
like-minded people. All right, awesome. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. <laughs>